Now let us exemplify value and impact of simulation modeling of supply chains for resilience analysis. We are using example of a real life supply chain and model resilience of this supply chain in, in logistics, which is supply chain simulation and optimization software. Our supply chain selected for this analysis, it's quite simple in terms of structure. However, it reflects all major components of uh, complex supply chain networks, which are encountered in practice. We especially selected a simple supply chain for this analysis in order you can understand um, all the details of our experiments, which can be difficult to observe if we take a huge real life complex supply chain network. Without loss of generality, we will obtain the same insights, the same implication as with modeling complex uh, networks. So we consider a supply chain, which uh, it's a brewery supply chain actually, with a brewery located in Berlin, in Germany. This is this uh, yellow icon. Uh, this brewery also has distribution center in Germany, a warehouse, a uh, red icon. Supply, it's insured from three suppliers in Germany. And they have about 50 customers, uh, 50 customers uh, all over the Europe. All of them are delivered from warehouse in Germany. Let us take a look at some data associated with this uh, simulation. First of all, we introduce bill of materials for this supply chain. The final product is beer. And we have three components, crate, hops, and malt coming from three suppliers located in Germany. Uh, supply chain has 50 customers located across different countries in Europe. There, are, there is one distribution center in Berlin and one factory in Berlin. We do not consider any capacity limitations. Of course, they can be included. Um, we are given demand for each customer. Uh, to avoid unnecessary and additional randomness, we consider demand deterministic. Of course, every time you can change deterministic demand to any stochastic demand of uh, several distributions. So however, this will of course create some randomness and um, may influence interpretation of our results. So we can also consider uncertainty in lead times if we want. How, again, uh, it is not uh, our objective now to analyze operational uncertainty, to focus on uh, disruptions. So for example, this data says that a customer in Barcelona orders every seven days 111 beer pellets. And so we are given data for both winter and summer periods. We know our revenue from selling one product unit. And we are also given expected lead time, meaning that if a customer in Barcelona place an order, say, on Monday, if you have five days to fulfill this order. So the order should arrive at Saturday at latest. Otherwise, if it arrives later, it will be considered as a late order. And uh, such delays will negatively influence our service level on time delivery. Next, we are given two events, which will be our disruption and recovery event. Disruption event will happen at uh, distribution center Berlin with, that will be temporarily closed on, December, on September, First, and the second event, it's recovery. The distribution center in Berlin will be opened again, recovered with some delay in 60 days. So for two months, this DC will be disrupted. Then we are given some facility expenses for warehouse and for factory, like inventory holding cost and fixed cost. 
We are also given inventory control policy for ingredients, which our factory purchases from suppliers. We use just-in-time policy. And for beer, both DC and factory are using continuous review policy. DC uses inventory control policy uh, with a reorder point and target inventory. And factory in Berlin also uses continuous production control policy um, with a reorder point 2000 and target inventory 5. So this is a kind of internal inventory control policy to control production. Then we are given passes in the network, transportation rules, uh, the goods first. So ingredients arrive from suppliers to factory. Then beer is shipped from factory to DCs and from DCs to customers. We are also given for each of the transportation passes transportation costs. For example, we are pay seven cent for transportation of one beer credit for one unit and of products of one beer credit and for one kilometer. It is a product distance-based transportation cost computation. We also have some processing costs in the warehouse uh, and in factory inbound and outbound processing costs. In production, we do not consider the capacity limitations, we only consider production costs. In shipment, you know, to establish product flows in our network, we introduce sources and destinations from suppliers to factory, from factory to DC, from DC to customers. We associate vehicle types and a transportation policy. In this case, LTL policy with uh, first in, first out priority and allowing partial delivery. In sourcing, we define that we will use dynamic closest rule, which means that the customer will always be delivered from the closest DC. Well, in this first experiment, we have only one DC. In our second experiment, we will introduce a second distribution center. And then this rule will make much sense since it will help to define where to take the product. One can use different sourcing strategies like fixed source would be single sourcing or dynamic source with multiple sourcing. And then you can define different rules, cheapest dynamic source, closest, fastest, or source with most inventory. This is actually what we need. And now we run experiment. We run simulation experiment in order to observe performance of our supply chain for three performance indicators. Financial indicators like profit, revenue, and cost, service level by products, and available inventory, including backlog. What we can see in simulation is that our profit is 8 million, 8.4 million. Uh, we have we can see significant impact of the disruption in distribution center on on-time delivery, which decreases significantly. And we can also see impact on inventory dynamics. Here we clearly can observe an interruption of material flows due to the disruption. We can run this experiment once again in dynamics so that you can see a dynamic simulation right, in time. So here we see first deliveries, everything run, runs smoothly. And now we are seeing situation in May. Remember the disruption will happen on September 1st. Right, let's speed up a bit, simulation. So now we observe the timeline and it's going now to come to September 1st. So now we see that material flow is interrupted nothing happens 
uh, in the warehouse and service level it's dropping it's decreasing then after capacity recovery in berlin in distribution center we are recovering on time delivery however we are not able to recover it to full extent so this line shows the average right if we change presentation here for example for daily we can observe that uh, during the disruption period our service level at some days was actually zero we were not able to deliver something and um, right actually uh, through the whole disruption period right our service level was zero because um, we have orders every seven days right and um, here we see this time limit that every time when the order came we were not able to deliver anything interestingly we can also see some drops in service level even after recovery of the warehouse capacity it is something which we already considered in our lecture and named disruption tail right? disruption tail uh, it's a consequence um, of um, backlog which was accumulated through the disruption period and here we can see that even if after capacity if in supply chain it's recovered we still have drops in performance and this is exactly this disruption tails which um, come because we do not change our production ordering policy after capacity recovery need to cope both with the new demand and uh, backlog accumulated over the disruption period right so we can note these numbers profit 8.3 and um, now we can run the same experiment if we wouldn't have any disruption right so i would just go to the events table and say remove any disruptions we run a business as usual scenario right and this is something which uh, we can observe uh, very interestingly that um, if we look at service level well uh, we have some some nice on time delivery which is slightly decreased due to seasonal fluctuation of demand right because uh, you know in winter and in summer we have different demands and interestingly we make here a profit of 10.9 million right so which means if we compare this profit 10.9 and 8.4 with disruption we see that if disruption happens we will we would lose we would lose 25% uh, of our profits so we can quantify the impact of disruption on supply chain performance through simulation right subsequently we look at situation when we would have a second distribution center let us go to table dc and factories and now we include the second DC. Our supply chain design consists of uh, factory in Berlin and distribution centers in Berlin and in Spain. And you can see that uh, following the dynamic closes rule, some customers are now allocated uh, to be delivered from the fact from the DC in uh, Spain. Now we need to add again two disruptive events. The first disruptive event is in our case uh, closure of DC in uh, Berlin. 
So let us find this DC as DC valid. It will occur on the 1st of September, as in the first experiment. And then we have the second event, which is recovery. Right, recovery of DC in Berlin, which will happen in 60 days after the disruption. You need two months and triggered by disruption. Okay, so now we are running an experiment and we can see if uh, our um, strategy, our resilience policy to have two distribution centers and so the second you see in Spain is a backup warehouse, if this would have positive impact on performance and make our supply chain more resilient. And indeed, working, what we can see here is that uh, we are now making profit very close to the ideal business as usual scenario. Right, in the ideal business as usual scenario, profit was 10.8, now it is 10.4. And with one warehouse, it was 8.4. So we see that our resilience strategy is much more efficient as uh, much more much more effective as uh, situation where you would have only one DC. Right, and now let us take a look at the overall this um, overall inventory, right? So we don't have any backlog and um, we can observe very nice uh, smooth inventory dynamics when primary warehouse is replaced for the time of disruption by the backup warehouse. So I hope with this example, uh, you can now understand the value of um, simulation modeling for resilience analysis and for analysis of uh, performance impact of supply chain disruptions much better.